I uh, qualified for my first Pro Tour by getting top 16 in GP Seattle. Um, it was back in May, so it was about five months ago. I played uh, Bloodbred Elf Control deck with Esper Charms and Cryptic Commands and Bloodbred Elves and a Cruel Ultimatum. Well, there should have been more. Uh, a couple of Petuminous Blasts. Uh, basically all the good cards in the standard. I went 7-2 and two day one um, and then went fi start out 5-0 day two. Um, so that gave me pretty good tie breaks. And then lost to PV playing for top eight. So I ended up 14th place, uh, three pro points, 500 bucks, and a trip to the Pro Tour. Um, a Bant deck with Lightning Helix and Wild Nicole. There were a lot of other decks that I was thinking about, like Zoo <clears throat> was obviously pretty popular at the Pro Tour, and I figured it probably would be, and it was what I was going to play. Um, but then through one of the Power9 Pro workshops, um, Ben Lundquist was re recommending that you play what you're comfortable with. Uh, and I have never really ever, ever, aside from like when I first started playing, played a, a beatdown deck. So it was kind of awkward in testing, like I didn't know when to race, when not to race. And Bant, like Bant still has like guys, right, that you want to turn sideways, but it's more control-ish. Um, Less control even though I had red, but I'm more comfortable with the cards that were in there. Like, I had to play with Rocks War Monks and Vendillion Clicks um, and Bant Charms. Oh, it was an awesome card. Uh, and I liked, the reason I played red, a lot of people asked why I was playing red, um, was because I thought there was going to be a lot of zoo, which there was. I didn't think there was going to be a lot of control. So, like, having counter spells didn't really matter a whole lot. Um, counter spells are okay against, like, combo decks, but not great because they have plans for it. Um, so, the red, like, gives you Lightning Helix which is obviously insane against Zoo. Um, and it gives you Wild Nacuddle, uh, which trades with all their guys, except for uh, Tarmogoyf. But you have plenty of answers to Tarmogoyf. And also gives you Ancient Grudge on the sideboard. And I've, I don't think I've played uh, an extended match or extended tournament without having an Ancient Grudge on my sideboard. Well, I got to play Kish Finx too. Yeah, that's like one of my favorite. It, it is my favorite card. I'll stop. I'll stop saying one of. It, finally, yes, it is my favorite card of all time. I won the first round because my opponent thought I was playing Zoo. Um, he explained to me why I won after that because uh, I, I went turn one stomping ground. Uh, it didn't play anything. Uh, he could have gone in a turn or two. He could have gone um, ball lightning, but he chose not to. Because he thought I had Lightning Bolt in hand. Because most Zoo decks do uh, have Lightning Bolt. Um, so then I played Rock's War Monk, and he knew obviously that I wasn't playing Zoo now. Uh, so instead of playing Ball Lightning then, he left to have Flames of the Blood Hand open. Uh, I attack with the Rock's War Monk, he goes to play Flames of the Blood Hand targeting me, and I Bant Charm it. So it, it, the misdirection was nice. And the same thing happened to a uh, the Fairy player that I played against. He, he kind of had to tap out a little earlier for, for Tarmogoyf for defense because I went turn one cat, turn two, or Wavacottle. Turn, turn one Wavacottle, turn two Tarmogoyf. Now he probably has to play Tarmogoyf turn two anyways. Um, but that allowed me to play a, uh, a Vendillion Click Unmolested, which gave me the free information about what was in his hand. Bant Charm was awesome for me. I actually kept a tally of it throughout the tournament because um, Bant Charm was a card that people, a lot of people questioned um, because it doesn't really see a whole lot of play in standard, even though it's standard legal. Uh, it's, it's a, I think it's better in extended, much better in extended than it is in standard. No one ever questions Putrefy. Uh, Putrefy has been legal for a long time. Uh, it's, it's, he's playing all of the green, black, rock decks in extended. Uh, and it is Putrefy. It's a little harder to cast, but not really if you're in Bant colors. Uh, it destroys artifacts, kills creatures, and also counters instants. I destroyed one artifact on the weekend. It was a uh, uh, Vidalcan Shackles. Uh, I removed three creatures, or put three creatures on the bottom of their owner's library, and countered ten instants. Oh, it was awesome. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I waffled a lot on those. Uh, one night it kind of hit me, like while I was trying to go to sleep. I was trying to think of a card that hated on um, Hypergenesis and Dredge, because like all the cards that hate on one really didn't do much against the other. Um, so Meddling Mage made the most sense. Now I get that Dredge can still kill you with uh, like Drowned Rusalka bringing back um, Bloodgast infinitely, uh, but you have Path and Bant Charm for those guys. 
Um, it just gives you a better better game, I thought, game one. And you could name like against the Fairy decks. I did this once in the Pro Tour. Vendillion, it's really good with Vendillion Click. I have Vendillion Click, the blue player I was playing against, so I had some spells that are sprites in hand, so I played the Melee Mage, naming spells that are sprite, always tapped out. Uh, a little intimidating. That was the first time I've ever done the, the where they call out the draft. Um, you have to... They tell you when you can pick up the next pack that your opponent's pass or that your the person next to you is passing. Um, they tell you how long you have, when the time's about up, when to draft, and you have to count out the cards face down um, or spread them out so your opponent, not your opponent, the person you're passing to can count the cards to make sure they're all there. It's very rigorous. You have to look straight in front. Um, it was not. It was cool though. No one took extra time like I'm used to in drafts here at home, so it actually went on time. Uh, it was fun. I thought I was comfortable with the Zendikar draft format. Uh, I knew what was powerful, what wasn't powerful. Uh, I had, you know, an idea of pick orders, things like that. Um, my opponents were really good. Obviously, I was playing at a pro tour. Uh, a lot of the problem with that I uh, that I had in preparing for it was that it wasn't legal on Z on Moto yet, so I couldn't really get any practice drafts in because we live in Idaho and a lot of players here um, aren't dedicated to getting better at draft or getting better at magic. So there's just like, you know, a handful of us. Um, so I did the best I could. I, did, I played in all the local drafts, things like that. Uh, but, yeah, I, was, I wasn't... My limited play is not the greatest anyways. I'm more like a constructed specialist, which is terrible to say because, well, if you're not good at limited, you're probably not good at magic. Ew. Well, I think... Well, Back to day one, I, I think I had a problem. Like I set myself a goal to make day two and then see what happened from there. I think that's part of why I didn't do so well because I kept saying, hey, uh, I just need to win one more and I'll make day two. Um, so, you know, I, I lost, lost. I started out 4-0, which was really awesome. Then went lost, lost, lost and had to win the, the final match against Oisip Lubitowicz, former Pro Tour champ, um, and beat him in two games uh, in the final round of the draft. Going into day two, I was pretty confident, actually. Uh, now, obviously, being 5-3, I knew I wasn't going to be playing with, like, the cream of the crop. The next day, I was going to be playing with all the other people that barely made it in. Um, so, I th felt my chances were pretty good. I could, I, I, and I even drafted a deck that I thought I could I could 3-0 with maybe if I got lucky, but it was more likely a 2-1 deck. It just didn't happen. Did not happen. I uh, Round 1, or I guess it'd be round 9, but day 2, round 1, I mulliganed a 5 and kept a... One lander with a ton of two drops and never drew another land. And then round two, or game two, I kept three lands, uh, two four drops, two two drops, um, and proceeded to draw f literally four and five drops for the rest of the game. Uh, I played 19 lands on my draft deck, too, because I had a ton of landfall. I had, like, three plated geopedes, um, so I didn't want to any, miss any of my land drops. So I figured, like, keeping these hands was a reasonable thing to do because I'm going to draw lands. Uh, it just didn't happen. And that's part of magic. Like, I wasn't even mad after the, they got over uh, because I figured I, I played the best I could and I, I did the percentage, did the math. Um, round two, I got there. I kept the best five lander I've ever, ever had and, like, limited. I went turn one, adventuring gear. Turn two, played a geopede. Uh, turn three, equip, land, swing, land, swing, land, swing, land, swing. He didn't have, he was playing green, white, uh, and this was post-board, so I knew he didn't have, like, a ton of removal. It was, it was basically either Journey to Nowhere or um, uh, Pitfall Trap, and I'd seen... Uh, a journey to nowhere in the previous game, so um, I went with it and it got there because I didn't think six was going to be any better. Uh, and then the next round, um, my opponent, I beat him. I beat him round one, uh, pretty handily. Round two or game two, he uh, he wrapped away my team and then killed me with a bunch of flying dudes. And then round or game three, uh, I know he has wrath now or day judgment. He gains, like, th literally 35 life off of Triple Ondu Cleric and Nemana Sellsword Brute, or whatever that guy is, the 3-3 the three, three Hill Giant ally guy. Um, and then plays Wrath to get rid of all my guys, and then I unload, like, Obsidian Fireheart and, uh, Obsidian Fireheart and Geyser Glider, and he plays another Wrath. Uh, <laughs> you can only play around Wrath so much, right? I, I mean, I didn't expect that he was going to have the second one. Uh, otherwise, maybe I keep the Obsidian Fireheart back, or maybe I keep the Geyser Glider back. But I figured I was in pretty pretty good position. I knew I knew I had to kill him quickly. 
uh, because him being at like you know forty life still or thirty life still after me already having double blade tusk bore, it, it wasn't good. Five, six, and seven. Six and seven. Um. Yeah, it, 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 but <laughs> kind of yucky. I love it. I am in love with Zendikar Draft. Uh, since we got back from the Pro Tour on Monday, Zendikar has gone up on Moto. I've drafted probably half a dozen times and not gotten packs in one draft. Um, I really, the more I draft, the more I fall in love with red, too. I, I'm not a red mage at all. Like, I'd never play red and constructed unless it is something that draws me cards. It was like Bloodbright Elf. A Bituminous Blast, which I guess is kind of like drawing cards. Um, but red in this format is really good. Like, the, all the removal is reasonable. Um, you're encouraged to play more lands now, so Magma Rift is good. Inferno Trap is good. Uh, Punish Fire is okay with people... Huh? Punishing. Punishing Fire. Pun yeah. Punishing Fire is good with people having, like, uh, the, the, the stupid antelope or the, the coming to play tap lands that gain you a life. And uh, Burst Lightning, obviously, is just insane. So they have, and they have good creatures, too, which is ridiculous. Like Blade Tusk Boar at Common, and a 3-2 Fear Guy is really good, obviously, for 4 mana and red. Um, and Geyser Glider is just, just such a kick in the pants. And Plated Geopede is good in an aggro deck. It's just all their creatures are really, really good. Uh, not really. Standard really doesn't excite me. None of the decks really appeal to me. The only deck that I really like, and this is really weird that I like it, is uh, the Boros Bushwhacker deck. Uh, I finally saw it in action. Um, it's the real deal. Uh, Ranger of Eos is a really awesome card in that deck. I was just surprised about all the powerful things that that, that, that deck could do. Like it, had, it has amazing early game, good mid game, and awesome late game with Ranger of Eos. So I'm, I'm a fan. Um, if only, I would like it if there's like another card advantage engine in the deck somewhere, like a Johnny Vengeance or something like that. Uh, just needs to cost like three or four or three or two mana though for an, an engine. Dark Confidant, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Call me greedy. That's a good question. Um, Dark Depths is a known quantity now, so I probably won't play it because like Ghost Quarter shuts the deck down and there are answers to what they have to answer your answers. Um, <sighs> I honestly wish I knew the answer to that question. Uh, I'd have to test a lot more, obviously, but Punishing Fire and Grove of the Burnwells, I think, is the real deal. Uh, it's I don't think it's just, like, some kind of cute interaction that just snuck up on people. I think it's, like, for real. So playing it in a Gifts deck like Chapin tried to do is probably a good idea. Um, and the Gifts Ungiven decks get a lot better when people know what they need to be searching for with Gifts Ungiven. So instead of, like, going blindly into a metagame, you know what it's going to look like, so you know what your Gifts piles need to look like to beat said deck. Get your girl with the burn willows.